Hello and welcome to another episode of the Good Hearted Podcast. I'm your host, Morgan Anderson, and today we're talking about holiday self-care prep. And trust me, you need to listen to this one. My goal with this episode is to help you prepare yourself for the stress of the holidays and to make sure everyone in your family survives, including you. I'm not sure when exactly the holidays became way less magical for me and way more stressful, but I think it's when I became an adult and I found a partner and then all of our holiday traditions and activities and events doubled. And so ever since I've had my daughter, my husband and I have tried harder and harder to make the holidays simpler and easier on us because it is just not fun to be exhausted on Christmas day and think, thank God this is finally over. I've definitely felt like that several times in the past, but it is my goal to not feel that way this year. And so as I was kind of thinking about these things and what I can do in advance to make my life easier for the holidays, I thought I might as well make it an episode. I've done episodes in the past on holiday stress and how to say no to things. And so I would definitely recommend you look back at those episodes. I will tag them in the description just so that you can find them if you want to. So while you're listening to this, feel free to pull out your phone or a piece of paper or something and make a list of things that you need on your self-care prep list for this coming holiday season. Because I feel like some of the things that I list, you will want on your list as well, but you might also be triggered to think about something else that you can add either as a new boundary or just something to try differently so that you can enjoy your holidays this year. Since I've become an adult and got married and extended our family, the holidays have just become way more stressful. I feel like everything costs more, but I somehow have less time and the expectations are still there that you know, we attend certain things or we dress a certain way for something or get Christmas pictures done or even some things that have just been my own expectations. I have been really hard on myself in the past when I haven't met those expectations. For instance, we didn't have Christmas pictures together last year and a lot of our traditions and normal events kind of got moved around because of people being sick and just things going on. And we really had to go with the flow and I had to forgive myself for not documenting that Christmas as much as I have in the past. But even though you have expectations on yourself and for your like immediate family who lives with you or who you're really close to, there's also all kinds of outside influences that can create stress, expectations, worry, overwhelm, frustration, like so many hard feelings to deal with when it's supposed to be such a joyful time. Not to mention things like grief and loneliness and being sad that the year is coming to an end or if somebody isn't joining you for the holidays that normally does. I feel like lots of the holiday songs are fun and happy and talking about everybody being thankful for each other and all of those things, but There are also so many hard things that come up around the holidays as well. In the past, we've struggled buying Christmas gifts for people, especially when we were like in our early 20s and had house payments and things to fix around the house, but then also the expectation that we had to get over-the-top gifts for everyone we knew. So we've had to scale back on certain things when it comes to the holidays because it is just too much. I remember probably five years ago or so, I was going to Walmart again for a last minute grocery run to pick up something else that somebody asked me to make. And I remember telling Dylan, I hate Christmas. And I had never said it out loud before, but for years I had been building up resentment for the holiday season. I was upset that Christmas wasn't what I wanted it to be. It was a big mix of what everybody else around me wanted their Christmas to look like. And I was just trying to like fit in and not rock the boat too much and just go to the places I was expected to go, make food for them and, you know, also be polite and be enthusiastic and buy a gift exchange gift or like whatever it was. extra thing that we maybe didn't necessarily have the money or the time or just the mental space to do. We were doing everything. And then we were so mad. Like Dylan and I have gotten in more fights around the holidays than any other time of the year. And so I hope I'm not alone in this because it is a really hard place to be. And it takes time to get to a place where you are really genuinely looking forward to the holidays in its whole 
versus only be looking forward to the one specific thing that you love most during the holidays. And so I actually decided this is going to be kind of a two-part series. And so the first thing I'm going to do is talk with you about how to mentally prepare for the holidays and things that you can do ahead of time to make your life a little bit easier. And then in my next episode, I'm going to talk more about actually dealing with things as they come up during the holiday season. So kind of like a little emergency kit if you feel like you want to no longer be part of your family anymore or something because of something that happened over the holidays or if you're just feeling that overwhelm and you can't shake it. So I think these episodes will work really great together to kind of give you some time to think about what you need on your little self-care prep list and then to also have an emergency kit for if things are just not going as planned and you're having a really hard time dealing with it, then I'm hoping to help you with some tips in that next episode. So if you haven't yet, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I post lots of formal podcast episodes. And then also on YouTube, I am posting little vlogs more on motherhood and just like more casual things in my life. But the good hearted podcast episodes are much more structured and not as chatty and kind of get to the point. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get into my prep list for self-care leading up to the holidays. I know Thanksgiving is still a couple weeks away at this point, but I really don't think you can start prepping yourself too early for literally anything because hopefully by the time the actual holidays and like the end of December comes, you will be in a good space mentally because you've been taking care of yourself and putting some rules and boundaries in place to just protect yourself and your mental health and your physical health during this crazy time of year. Okay, so I think I have about seven things on this checklist and I try to put them in order of what's most important to kind of the least important kind of afterthought thing. So if you do nothing else, please listen to at least this first tip and probably the second one as well, just to help you get in a really good space and kind of get ahead of the holiday madness. So the first thing on my holiday self-care prep list is to mark your calendar with the events and things that you want to do that are really important to you or just that you really want to do this holiday season. I know in the past, I have not done things that I was excited to do because it conflicted with other plans or I was worried about being too tired or I was worn out from doing some event and then I ended up not doing the thing that I wanted to do and then I got pissy about it and mad instead of just making the things I really wanted to do a priority. So as you're looking at your calendar for like the next month before the holidays, you can look at any important appointments you have. Like I know for sure I need to go ahead and book therapy appointments because that will be the first thing that I kind of let fall off if I'm too busy or too tired or I don't have childcare. So it is definitely important to me to make sure that I have those things taken care of because I feel like there's no better time really to bitch about things <laughs> than the holiday season. I feel like I will feel so much better if I can get some things off my chest as they're happening and kind of just let go of them. And so I want to set myself up for success to make sure that I have those scheduled and I have childcare like set in stone so that nothing gets in the way of me going to those appointments. It could also be things like getting a manicure and pedicure before Christmas with, you know, your mom or your kids or friends or something like that. Just having some kind of special appointment set aside that allows you to relax and be pampered. It could be a specific holiday centered event. Like I know we have a shopping center that does a big lighting of their Christmas tree and like a parade. Back when it was just Dylan and I, we always made a point to get to that even when I was pregnant, um, but we haven't taken Harper and I'm not sure if if we want to take Harper, but just things like that, making sure I'm checking out when those events are happening and making deliberate space for them in our week and in my calendar. It could also be going to a specific Christmas festival or parade or meeting Santa, like whatever is your priority, make sure you get on the calendar and then honor those plans. Make arrangements if you need to, whether you need to make sure that you clean your house ahead of time or take your kids somewhere or invite other people along with you. Make sure you give people plenty of notice to do that. And I just think having those things that are so important to you be a priority might help change your whole mental mindset on the holiday season because 
who cares if everything else goes to shit? If you got to do your priorities and the things that you were really excited about and happy about. The second thing on my list is to shop early for gifts. Today it is November 6th and I am probably halfway done with my Christmas shopping. I am totally done with Harper, I think, and then halfway with most of our family members. And I'm kind of just waiting on their list to maybe order something off of Amazon. So I started shopping for Christmas probably back in September. Even Harper, I had bought her a gift last Black Friday and she just wasn't quite old enough for it by Christmas. And so I just put it back and now I'm going to give it to her this Christmas. I am always keeping an eye out for sales and clearance things and just putting those things back for Christmas. So it's definitely never too early to get started. And I would make your life as easy as possible if you can. And even though I love shopping, I love finding a good gift for somebody. I just hate going to the stores during the holiday season because it is so packed. Things are really picked over and the lines are long and it's just like a lot of stimulating things. Like people are everywhere. There's Christmas music everywhere. And so I would rather have the gifts ready to go. And then as I'm leisurely out shopping and I see something that I think somebody would like, then I can pick it up instead of like scouring all of Beaver Creek for <laughs> all of my Christmas gifts and then not finding what I really want. The third thing on my list that has been really important for my family and has changed pretty much how we see the holidays as a whole is being willing to switch up our own traditions if no one else is budging. And the pandemic really helped us kind of force ourselves to do this because the pandemic obviously changed everything. A lot of the bigger family events didn't take place. And that first Christmas during COVID, even though it sucked, it was kind of nice to be so laid back and chill for the holiday season and to just be with my little family and really enjoy our time together. And we were like, whoa, this is like the best Christmas we've ever had which is wild. But when Dylan and I first got married, we had extended family and extra, extra extended family events all on like similar days. So it would be like three or four stops on Thanksgiving day and then three stops on Christmas day with four separate events. Just two of them ended up being at my parents' house. And then Christmas Eve was usually at least two different families' houses. And we were making side dishes for all of these things and buying gifts and getting ready. And once we had a kid, it was like, this is really fucking <laughs> Hard. I don't like running around like a crazy person. And so we just decided every other year we'll go to one Thanksgiving or the other if it's on the same day. For me, I think I've talked about this before, but my parents have been divorced since I was like one. So I am very used to having multiple holidays at multiple houses on multiple days. Like it doesn't really matter to me that Dylan and I have Christmas on Christmas day. I know some people, they want it on Christmas day and that's totally fine. But thankfully that is something that I have been able to let go and get over. Now, when he and I were first married, I was pretty adamant about us having Christmas day on Christmas day because that had never really been my life before. Like I was always spending Christmas Eve in one state, Christmas day in the other state, and then it would switch every year. And then of course with extended family, we do things on different days. And so it was just a lot, but I think Dylan and I have come to realize we have a better time with our family if we spend a longer period of time at one event versus staying for like an hour at each one and then being exhausted at the end of the day. So even if we have to miss a get together for one year, like, yeah, that sucks and we'll miss those people, but we will have a better visit with them the next year instead of like rushing to get to the next location. So last year, Dylan and I decided to switch our Christmas day tradition to Christmas Eve morning. So Dylan always has off Christmas Eve. We don't really have plans until the evening on Christmas Eve for the most part. And so we just decided to open all of our gifts as a family that morning. We made breakfast, we had coffee, and we opened gifts from like nine to 11 or something like that. Like we would open a gift and you know, watch some of a show, get a little something else to eat and then open another gift. Like it was very laid back, which was like amazing. It was so nice. We got to stay in our jammies. We didn't have to like rush through opening our gifts to get ready to go somewhere. 
we got to just relax and it be the three of us with no pressure. And that was honestly one of my favorite Christmases because we had our Christmas before the actual Christmas day. And so then it didn't really matter what we did on Christmas day or who we went to see because we had such a good experience, just the three of us. And so I am very thankful for that memory. And I don't know if we'll do that forever, but I think we'll probably do that this year and we'll see how it goes. And then we'll be willing to make some changes in the future if we need to. And then last year, what we ended up doing was still putting out milk and cookies on Christmas Eve night for Santa. And then we opened our stockings the next morning on actual Christmas day before we had to go to our other family houses to celebrate Christmas. And that worked really well for us also. The fourth thing on my list is kind of a hard one, but a good one. And it is to let go of control where you can. I know it's really hard to give up total control in certain areas when it comes to cooking or cleaning or buying the gifts, but anything that you genuinely don't care about, hand it off to somebody else. Let your kids help with the chores. Let your husband do the wrapping, even if it's awful. Like, who cares? And honestly, ever since we've had Harper, Dylan has really stepped up and helped me make side dishes for events because a lot of the times I was getting myself and Harper ready and it was really hard for me to make something without burning it. Or I would be getting up at like 6 a.m. while he and Harper slept until 8, making the food. And then I would have to get ready and then I have to get Harper ready. And then, you know, we have to actually get things out of the oven and get places on time. And it was just a lot. And so several times we've ended up making things that are easy for Dylan to make and that he's willing to do. And he just takes care of it for me so I can spend my time getting ready and getting Harper ready. I feel like this whole point is just going to be about what I delegate to Dylan, but that is basically what it is. I have also asked him to take over buying gifts for his family. And this is mainly because I am intensely anxious and I get very overwhelmed buying things for people. I mean, I love shopping and I love finding gifts, but when I can tell that they don't really love their gift... I get really down on myself and I'm embarrassed and I just have a really hard time with it. I actually hate giving gifts because <laughs> I just don't want to give somebody something they will never use or something that they don't genuinely like. And so I've been asking everybody for a list for a very long time. I would much rather buy something specific off of their list than to spend $50 buying things that they might not actually like. And also Dylan knows his family so much better than I do, even though we've been together like over a decade now, he still knows them better than I do. And so I feel like it just really takes a lot of pressure off of me to let him look through their list and decide what he wants to get them or if he's not getting something on their list. And then like, if they don't like their gift, that's on him, which sounds kind of shitty, but you know, it's always been on me to buy gifts for my family and his family. And then I felt like I took all the blame or he'd be like, oh, why'd you get so-and-so that? Well, because you did it. Like you didn't get anything. And so it's all about communication and just voicing your needs to whoever is in your village or who lives in your house that can help you with things. And to just stop being so worried about getting everybody three gifts or spending X amount of money on them. Like even if you only get somebody one thing, but it's like an expensive thing that they really wanted on their list, be okay with that. Don't feel like you have to kill yourself to go above and beyond and go way over the top with gifts and decorations and just anywhere that doesn't make you happy, that doesn't give you that magical, joyful result that you hope that it will. So my next point is something I'm going to go into more in the next episode, but that is to have some stress relief tools available to you whenever shit hits the fan. And so this is something good to do ahead of time so that just when you're feeling overwhelmed and upset and frustrated, you can reach for those tools, whatever they are. You don't have to think about like, how do I deescalate from this situation and these feelings? So I know myself loves some adult extracurriculars <laughs> after a very stressful holiday event. So whether that's spiked eggnog or your favorite alcoholic drink or some kind of sweet treat or comfort food or just something that helps you like 
take a deep breath and unwind a little bit, even if like whatever thing you just went to was a disaster. Also, I don't think there's anything wrong with doing a little something before you go to an event. You know, sometimes you just need a glass of wine or something to loosen up just a little bit so you're not so uptight. Like I know all the time when I see people like dressed up and at church and sweet little family, I know somebody was yelling at somebody else and like it was a shit show trying to get out the door. <laughs> and so sometimes I'm wound up from just trying to get us up and out the door. It's not even something that happened at the event, but I'm just wound up. And then if somebody says something or looks at me funny, then I am on the defensive. So sometimes I just need a little bit of that like social lubrication <laughs> to get through certain things. I mean, it reminds me of like Amazing Race, trying to get to all the things as fast as possible, do them correctly, and then like you are beat by the end of it. I also love watching Christmas movies during the holiday season. It's my favorite, even ones that aren't like traditional Christmas movies, just the things that make me feel warm and cozy and make me happy or make me cry. And so I love having a list of those because sometimes like when I'm flipping through Netflix or whatever, I don't think about those movies. And so instead I could have like a list of 10 movies that make me feel really good and really happy. And then I could just decide to stay up a little bit late that night, have my drink, have some snacks and watch a movie that will just kind of let me escape <laughs> from my reality for a little bit and to get back into those happy, feel-good feelings. Along with that, I would also recommend having a cozy book or an audio book that is there for you when you need it. That way you can just kind of pick it up or put your earbuds in and escape for a little bit. I don't think there's anything wrong with a little escapism during the holiday season. It is crazy and wild and unpredictable, or even when it is predictable, it's like a shitty kind of predictable. And so I think it's okay to take a little break just to help your heart rate come down a little bit and to soothe some of that anxiety and overwhelm. Another great tool is to have some meditations that are ready for you or whatever works for you to calm down, whether it's coloring or an app or some kind of project that you can do or certain housework. Like just think about those things now and make a little note in your phone or a mental list or write it on a piece of paper. You could even get a box of things that have like those things in it, something to cuddle, a warm blanket, um, some kind of fidget toy, like literally anything you can think of that you're like, oh yeah, that helps me calm down. Keep those things in mind so that when those feelings come up, you can really try to make the most of them and turn your day around. I would also really recommend having some kind of text buddy to just be able to dump if you want to, or to just be like, oh my God, I'm at this event and you will not believe what just happened. Like, let me tell you, because who else doesn't want to be able to dump on somebody about their family drama or just holiday stuff that has gone crazy? And so I think that's really good to have like a best friend or just somebody, a cousin that like is also in the situation to just be able to talk about it. And then I would also set up some kind of dinner date or something where you can meet up with that person after the holidays and then just unload and feel like you guys both have a little therapy session and you can just talk about how crazy it was and how you feel or if it was really good and that you made some changes, just having somebody who is kind of walking through it with you, but then you can come together and both talk about your feelings and what your experiences were with the holiday. And it also like helps you bond and just feel better for getting some stuff off your chest. Next, you need to really manage or totally destroy your expectations. And I'm not trying to say expect the worst for every situation, I'm saying be realistic with your expectations. If you know somebody is going to rub you the wrong way or you're going to go to something and they're not going to have anything that you want to eat or you have to do something really early in the morning and you're not a morning person and you are not happy about it, just don't go into those events and those situations thinking everything is going to go great and you're not going to feel stressed at all. Just be realistic with yourself. Be like, I'm going to be grumpy because I'm really tired. I need extra coffee this morning. I need to actually go to bed early the night before so that I'm rested. And I'm right now giving myself permission to take a nap when I get home from this thing. Just kind of mentally setting yourself up for success to be able to deal with the situations and know, okay, this is how I function in that situation. What can I do 
to prepare myself for it or to like act as recovery when I'm done with it. And if you feel like something shitty is gonna happen at an event or in a situation, just try to tell yourself that and be pleasantly surprised if it doesn't happen. Like that is always a great surprise where I'm expecting something to go terribly wrong and it actually goes really well. And then it just makes me happy. It makes me feel better. So again, I'm not saying expect the worst, just expect the reality that has happened in past situations that have been a lot like this particular one. And so the last thing on my holiday self-care prep list is to have a don'ts list. Like we don't blank. I don't blank. I really didn't realize how many things were on this list for Dylan and I until I was making the notes for this podcast. And there's actually a lot that we don't do when it comes to the holiday season, which was really surprising for me because we both grew up in like very traditional homes and Christmas is a big deal. And we both still love Christmas, but it just looks so different now than it used to for us. So by going through and deciding on things that we just don't care about or aren't going to question anymore, that's kind of what I put on this don't list for us that are kind of no brainers. Not saying we would never do one of these things, but it's definitely not a priority. We don't kill ourselves to do any of these things. And most Christmases, we don't do these activities or these traditions because we just realize like they were not important to us. They may have been at some point, but now we've got new traditions and we do some things differently. And so those things just don't fit in with our life anymore. So I'm going to read you some things that are on our don'ts list for just kind of some inspiration or so you get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So we have never done a gingerbread house. I know some people are super into that. And when I've seen them at the store, I've thought many times about getting it but we just have no desire to do it. So we don't do gingerbread houses. I'm not saying we never will. I'm sure once Harper gets older, she'll be way more into that, but it's just not something that we've ever done. And so I don't waste the money buying a gingerbread house kit when we're probably not even going to enjoy building it together. I also don't do excessive wrapping. Like I know my wrapping game sucks ass. Like I have the most basic wrapping things, but that is what works for me. I suck at wrapping, like paper wrapping, and I hate it and it's so time consuming. And then also the bows. My freaking cat knocks off every bow I put on any present. And so I kept buying bows and kept putting them on and then it would tear the paper and all my bows would be missing. And even though I've definitely gotten comments about not having bows on my presents, what's the point? Miko is just going to destroy them. I'm tired of buying them. I'm tired of trying to put them back on and they're not even sticky because they have dirt and hair and everything else on them. And so I don't do them. Plus she eats them and I'm tired of picking up like plastic when she has chewed on it and I don't want her to get hurt and she won't stop. So I don't really do bows anymore. Sometimes I will put bows on them once I get there. But last year, I think I totally forgot about bows and I was like, it's just going to have to be okay. I've also gotten lots of boxes that have a print on them so I don't have to wrap them. I also feel like that's just much less waste. Not that I'm like super conscious about the amount of waste that my family has, but that's just one thing that I can do to kind of lighten the load a little bit and it's easier on me. And so I just go to Walmart or Home Goods and get cute little t-shirt or coat boxes that already have a cute print on them and then I just tape it up and put a tag on it and I'm done. It's kind of amazing. I love it. Sometimes I still enjoy wrapping presents that don't really fit in a box, but then I'm not like over and over and over again, wrapping a t-shirt box. You know what I mean? It's like more interesting when it's like a weird shape and I have to wrap it with that. And then I only have to have a couple rolls of paper. I haven't bought actual paper in a couple years now because I already had like six or seven and I was still buying them every year. And I was like, why am I buying new stuff? Well, because it's cute or because it's gone on clearance or whatever, but I've just been telling myself I need to use what I have and then I can buy more. That is what makes sense. And plus, I just hate having a lot of half used paper. I don't know. I guess I just am boring when it comes to gift wrapping and I fucking hate it. So, but if you love it, you should continue to do it. So last year for the first time, Dylan and I did not get each other big gifts. We scratch that. We didn't get big physical gifts. So we actually both got tattoos before Christmas, like in November, I think. And then we really only did stockings for each other and maybe one 
actual physical gift for Christmas. And that was great because like I was talking about earlier, I get so anxious and stressed out shopping for people. And Dylan is terrible about giving me ideas for what he wants for Christmas. So then I just kind of feel like I'm guessing and I'm just going to TJ Maxx or going on Amazon and finding something that will work, but I'm not confident that he will actually love it. And so with our tattoos, like we got to pick our own designs. We went together to the appointments and now we have like a gift that will last forever, which I think is so cool. And we love that. And then on Christmas, day, well, Christmas Eve day for us, we kind of just got to sit with Harper and play with her and not be worried that like he got me something that I would never even use or vice versa. Like there was just so much less pressure and it wasn't like a competition to see who could buy each other more or to feel bad that I didn't get him something when he got me this big thing. And so again, I'm not sure that we'll always do that, but I think we're going to do something like that again this year. I don't know if we're going to do tattoos or not, but we're probably just going to stick to stockings and maybe, you know, one other physical gift because we also kind of buy what we need to throughout the year. We don't normally have a big list for each other once Christmas comes. Okay, and then I'm just going to kind of fly through the rest of these because it has been a much longer episode than I was anticipating. Um, we've never done Elf on the Shelf. I don't know that we ever will. Uh, we don't go see Santa. If we go to an event or like last year we went to Clifton Mill and we happened to see Santa, Harper wasn't able to go sit on his lap, but we were able to see him like in his little workshop and, you know, talk to him for a second. That was perfect. That was good for me. And really this started because... My mom, at her Christmas Eve party, we always had Santa come. And so I didn't really ever want to stand in line at the mall or go to some random event and then like go see Santa. I don't know. It's just never been my thing. And I think Harper would be fine now, especially with when we went to Disney. She was totally fine with the characters and stuff. But I know some kids really hate getting their picture with Santa. I'm not trying to force my kid to do that. And I'm not waiting in a long ass line to pay $50 for a picture with Santa. You know what I mean? I know it's a little dramatic, but still you get my premise. And so if we go somewhere and we see Santa, great, but I'm not going to break my back to go see him. We also don't go to church services for Christmas and I don't do any excessive baking. If I'm in the mood, I will make something, but that is probably going to be my Christmas crack, <laughs> which is like check cereal and pretzels and M&Ms and I think that's about it. And then white chocolate all on it. And it gets, well, oh, it's like my favorite. I will make like a triple batch and it will be gone within a week, especially if I give some to my sister. But it is amazing. That is the kind of baking I like to do. We might do like an overnight French toast thing. That's something that we really like to make around Christmas. But when it comes to baking things for people or for events, like that is just not me. I will do freaking scalloped potatoes that I can get in the box or something that's a little easier for me to throw together because I just, I'm not good at baking. It does not come naturally to me. I am not good at measuring out things and not burning them. So I've just let that go. Like when I'm in the mood, I will make a little something, but I'm not going to force myself to do it or think I am a bad mom because we didn't do homemade cookies or something like that. So those are the seven tips that I have on my holiday self-care prep list. Why the fuck did I make that so long? Like sometimes I cannot think of a simpler way to say something. I'm sorry, but you know what I'm talking about. Those are my seven tips, the seven things I will be doing to try to mentally prepare for the holidays and to just take a big deep breath and survive it. Like that is my goal for the year. If I get to enjoy it, that would be fucking amazing. And I hope that I get to. Also, my daughter and my husband are home and they are making lunch right now. They've been very quiet the whole rest of this time, but you might hear them banging around a little bit in the kitchen. So if you do, I'm sorry about that. I really hope this episode speaks to you and helps you because I feel like holiday anxiety is the worst kind of anxiety. It is like way worse than the normal anxiety and overwhelm you feel throughout the rest of the year. And I think that's mainly because you still have your regular life to live and job to do and chores to keep up, but then you also have all of these extra obligations that just don't easily fit into your schedule or your routine. And then like you just get so burnt out and it sucks. 
I want you to have a happy holiday season and to be able to still take care of yourself throughout it and not just be pleasing everyone else this holiday season and doing all of the things that are expected of you that you would rather not do because you're about to snap. So I want you to do what you can to take care of yourself and take care of your family this holiday season. That needs to come first. If you have something big planned or some kind of big family thing, but like you guys are just not feeling it, you're all grumpy or you're sick or whatever, just cut yourself some slack, stay home, skip out on that thing. I always think that is better than forcing yourself to go to something and then having a terrible time because you know, your toddler didn't get a nap or you're hungry because they don't serve food that you like, or, you know, just tired from late night shopping or wrapping or cleaning or baking, cooking. There's so many things that fall, especially on women during the holiday season. And I think it's time for us to take that back, to make the holiday season something that is enjoyable for us, not just what Instagram and Pinterest and the news portrays the holiday season should be. I feel like most Christmas movies revolve around crazy expectations that cannot be met or constantly trying to one up somebody else and what they do on Christmas. And usually the moral of the story is less is more and your family is what is important. So I hope you will remember that this holiday season. I hope you will give yourself some grace and be patient with yourself. Be willing to slip up and make mistakes and to just let it go if you can. And it's okay if something comes up and you just realize you don't want to do it and you have to say no. Because you can't always know ahead of time how you're gonna feel on a specific day or what turns are gonna happen while you're trying to coordinate something or plan something. And sometimes some really hard, messy feelings can come up during the holidays. Out of nowhere, you can feel lonely or find yourself grieving somebody or missing somebody around the holidays. And I think a lot of times, I at least push those things down. And then it's like after the holidays, I finally let myself think about it and It's really been in the back of my mind the whole holiday season. And so I'm trying to just deal with those feelings as they come up to let Dylan know if I'm feeling a certain way or to have a cry about it, like to step away, take 20 minutes in my room to just kind of like think about it, process it, you know, whatever you have to do in the moment to get through, as long as you're not hurting yourself or anybody else, obviously, I think you should do it. So please make this holiday season fun for you do some things that are a priority that might seem selfish, but that will make the more stressful parts of the holiday season not as bad because you've kind of filled your cup and taken care of yourself and your family and done the fun traditions that you actually love and that mean a lot to you. If you enjoyed this episode, please send it to somebody else who might need to hear this message and might need this checklist to help survive the holiday season because it is so hard. If you are identifying with some of the things that I've talked about in this episode, I bet some of your closest friends or family members are also dealing with it because it's just something that we try not to talk about. We try to be optimistic about the holidays and have a great time and act like everything's fine and try not to get in fights with our family members. But like sometimes it is the hardest time of the year. So reach out to somebody, send this episode to them. You can even be like, hey, would you be my texting buddy? (laughs) Or can we schedule drinks for in between Christmas and New Year so we can like unload what happened during the holidays? And then be sure to subscribe to the podcast because my next episode is gonna be about that maintenance during the holiday season and how to cope with things when they go wrong or how to just like try to ground yourself and recenter when things go to shit because- let's be honest, they're probably going to at some point in December. And I want to give you tools to be able to cope with them and make the most of it, even when things that are totally out of your control happen. This episode is really something that's been heavy on my heart and I was not sure how to approach it. So I hope that I did it justice and that this becomes a good resource for you this holiday season. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to like and then also subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And I will see you in my next one.